Everybody and welcome to Dryer Days Art Studio. I'm Catherine. Thank you so much for being here today. Well, these are the cupcake coasters, as I've named them, that I'm going to be working on in this video. In this video, I want to share with you five things that you can be doing to make your coasters stand out. Five different techniques or things that you can implement in your coaster making that's just going to make them stand out a little bit above from the rest. As a bonus for my patrons, I'm going to have extra tips and tricks over on my Patreon, and that'll be five more tips, maybe even more than five, I'm not sure yet, but uh, that'll be over there for my patrons in the $5 and up tier. So if you're interested in supporting my channel and getting bonus content, check out the video description on how you can do that. Let's start with the molds to make these coasters. I'm using the Agate Slice coaster molds from my store, dryerdaysartstudio.com. Every product that I use in this video, with the exception of this golden molding paste, will be available in my store, dryerdaysartstudio.com. So I'm using this golden molding paste here to add some texture around the edges of the mold. And that is my first tip in this video is to incorporate some sort of texture into your coasters. This is really gonna help them stand out. And as you may have noticed there, this molding paste is a semi-opaque paste, so I really wanted them to be white, 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 these edges. So I am using some opaque medium body acrylic paint and just mixing that right in with this medium, which you can do. You can add any color that you want. You can make it gray or black. I really wanted these to be white. So once I get them to a really nice consistency and the color that I want, I'm gonna use a couple different palette knives here. I'm using this one here first because I could get a really nice amount of paste on to my palette knife. And then I'm going to use a thinner tip palette knife to really help get that molding paste into the edge, into all the little nooks and crannies there on the side. And this tool also, it just helps, it's, it, because it has such a smaller tip, I can really manipulate the paste better as to where I want it to go on that mold because I, I really had a vision in my head of where I wanted this texture to be and I didn't want it to go past a certain point and you'll see what I mean here in a second. So time lapse of just a little bit more in detail of me doing this here. And I'm using a baby wipe to clean up any excess that got on the top of the mold or on the sides. I love baby wipes, they get off everything, including resin. I use them all the time. And here what I just wanna show is, I only had that texture paste coming about halfway up the side or the depth of the mold because I knew I wanted to leave maybe a clear edge there. I thought that might look cool in the finished piece. So I just wanted to highlight that here that I didn't go all the way up the side of the mold. And you can also flip the mold over here to make sure that you have all those nooks and crannies filled. You can tell where maybe you didn't get any paste down into the nooks and crannies by just flipping it over like this. And here we are going to just let this dry. I let it sit for about a day to let it try, kind of dry up as much as it would. And I'm checking that as I look at this going around that all of the sides match up. And I'm kind of pointing that out here. See how those sides look like they have a nice flow from edge to edge. But then when I get to this one, uh, looks like it's not quite matching up. So I'm just going to take a little bit more of my paste and just put a little bit, work it in there just a little bit so that it matches up more consistently with that coaster that's right next to it. And now it looks a lot better. The nice thing about agate coasters is they're rocky and they kind of look more natural so they don't have to be totally perfect, but that looks much better matching up than it did. So we're gonna use some of this Van Gogh glitter. This is currently one of my favorites. It's a beautiful gold holographic multi-sized glitter. So you're gonna get chunky pieces in here. You're gonna get fine pieces in here. It is gorgeous. And because it's holographic, it goes with so many different colors. We're also going to use some gold sparkle pigment, and I'm also gonna be using some of my gold metallic pigment. 
Now we're getting ready to pour the resin. And this is where the second tip that I wanna give you comes in. and that is to use clear negative space in your coasters. And you can use this in any part of your coasters. I am choosing to use it kind of in the more middle of the coaster. So I knew I wanted to start with my darkest or heaviest colored item in the very corner here, and I was gonna work my way out to be lighter. So I did let this resin sit for quite a bit. This is Total Boat's countertop resin and I let it sit for a while in the cup and really let all the bubbles come out of it. And it also thickened up that resin for me a little bit so that this glittered resin wasn't going all over the place. I really wanted to keep it confined and letting it sit for a little while and thicken up will really help achieve that. I'm just gonna hit with some really light heat here to pop any bubbles, especially in that corner. You really wanna make sure you're getting it into that pointed corner there. And I just wanted to show you something that happened here because I like to show you kind of the oopsies and then show how it can still work out in the end. I really like to use rubbing alcohol or isopropyl alcohol and spritz a little. It really helps pop bubbles, but look at how now that glitter is really spreading out. When I had it really nice and contained before, now it's really kind of spreading out. But I thought, well, I kind of like the look of this a little, but again, we wanna, I wanted to have a consistent look going around all four coasters. Like you could stick them together like this in a circle and they would all go together. So now what I'm doing is just taking a popsicle stick to really blend it, make sure we're being consistent, making sure there's no glitter getting on the other part of the mold. And now I'm going to drizzle that clear. And as you notice here too, when I put that clear on, it's pushing that glitter back. So if you ever wanna kind of push pigmented resin out of the way, add some clear. I've done this in other videos too, in geode art pieces, and you can watch it. Just push pigments or glitter back out of the way. And you kind of have to babysit it sometimes or stay on it to make sure it's still pushing the way you want to. But this is a way of getting things to kind of move where you want them to. After I applied the clear resin around the inside to kind of push that glitter back in, I came around all of the coasters, the outside edges and everything, and filled in with a light layer of clear. I even put it over the texture here, so I filled it in all the way out to the edges. I had a little spill here, so that's what I'm cleaning up with my baby wipes. <laughs> and we'll push these back where they go, and I will continue around filling out the coasters with this clear resin. And you can see there, I mean, you can tell, this resin has virtually no bubbles in it at all. And that is really what you want when you're gonna have any kind of clear negative space. You wanna be able to see through these coasters. Tip number three that I have for making your coaster stand out from the rest is to use a chunky or a multi-size glitter. One that's really gonna stand out. Uh, this is a beautiful glitter, this Van Gogh, and I have been dying to use it in some coasters and I had a vision for these and really I based the entire coaster color palette and sort of vision and idea around this Van Gogh glitter. I knew it would stand out, I knew it would be beautiful, and I based the whole thing around it. So using a high quality, solvent resistant, chunky glitter that is gonna stand up in the resin and still pop and be so sparkly and beautiful is really gonna help your coaster stand out. Now I'm coming around with the gold sparkle pigment and just laying a thin line and going back over and tracing and tracing and tracing. And as you can see here, I'm actually overlapping the coasters making sure again we're staying consistent going all around the way so that these would match up if you stuck them all together like this. This line here wasn't really doing it for me so I broke it up a little bit with an orange stick. As you can see, just making some waves and swirls to help break this up a little. Now 
as I do with most of my coasters or when I'm using even the deeper molds, I like to go over and over and over the same spots again and just keep building them up with that same color. And in the process of doing this, you can see right there, I had a little drip of the Van Gogh get on the textured part, which I was planning on keeping white this whole time. I thought these were gonna be very light coasters, but then I kind of liked how it looked. <laughs> and I put a little bit more down and moved it around a little bit. And I thought, oh, this looks really cool. And it helps kind of break up this white stark contrast here. And so I incorporated that. And again, going along with tip three, you know, we're using a chunky multi-size glitter here. Um, I have some really big square glitter. I have glass glitter. There's all kinds of stuff, um, even um, more like um, fire glass you could probably use depending on how deep your mold is or the mirrored glass that you can get at Michael's and just something that's gonna stand out. And look at how cute this look. I, I think it looks like little sprinkles and with the creamy white, that's why I started to feel like these look like some vanilla cupcakes, and that's why I named them the Cupcake Coasters. All right, so let's demold these. Okay, as you can see there, we had some of that medium that did not dry. And I had this happen in some other red coasters that I made. Actually, I made a video, the same exact thing happened, but I actually don't mind it because when you just kind of tap it down a little and let them air dry, it gives almost a better rockier look than if they had just dried completely nice and flush and smooth in that mold. So it's not a big deal. Um, if you want to see more on this, I will link that other coaster video uh, down below. And also if you hit the lowercase I, you can see that video there as well. The number four tip that I want to touch on is drawing on lines, not just finishing the edges. So when I demolded these and I set them out, I let them sit flat for about two days to really harden up. And I decided that they needed something a little extra. That white still looked really stark there on this side of the coasters and I felt like it needed something a little bit more to blend them. So I got out two different gilding or leafing paints that I have. You kind of want to mix them up really good because they can get sort of chunky and separate. So I'm just mixing them up. While I'm doing that, I'm going to mention again, if you guys want to have some bonus content or bonus tips, consider becoming a patron. And all of that is linked down below. I really like doing bonus content for my patrons over there. I appreciate the support so much. It really goes a long way in creating all of the content, the free and the patron content. So thank you guys so much for that. And what I'm going to do here on this white piece of paper is because I'm putting that gold right up against that white, I wanted to see how each one would look. You can see one is definitely more of a bronzy or an antique gold and one is more of a true yellow gold. And I have these very, very fine brushes here. And we're just gonna take the jar here. I'm gonna do kind of more of the antique looking one. I thought it would go a little bit better with the colors that we had happening in here. And I'm just gonna follow along that line. And it's gonna help the section not only stand out, but also sort of blend. It, it does a little bit of both. It's almost like a low light that you're adding to bring more dimension to the coasters. So just very, very little bit of that paint on my brush and just gonna come around very, very smoothly here. And what I wanted to point out here, it's a little bit hard to see on camera, but from where I am laying this gold line, when you flip them over and look at the other side, you can see a little bit of that gold peeking through because I'm kind of lapping it a little bit on the white and a little bit onto the clear there. So you can actually see it on the other side, giving even an other, another added dimension. Just, it looks so layered. It looks so dimensional. It's just beautiful. And we're gonna add another little line here, kind of midway or a quarter of the way up the coaster. This is again to add dimension. And because these are sort of an agate slice coaster, keeping with that agate or geode look. And this is just a real, this gold was just perfect with these. It went with the Van Gogh glitter. It went well with the gold pigment we had going on. 
is really, really pretty in there. I like doing this part too. And I make sure to wear gloves just so I don't get any oils on here because whenever I do lines, I'm usually going to do a flood coat. So as you saw there, I'm gonna use some latex. I'm gonna pour some in a cup. I'm gonna use a little sponge brush and I'm gonna apply this pretty liberally on the underside of the coaster. So this is the side of the coaster. This is how they were in the mold. So like face down. And I'm going to take a little piece of sandpaper here and just gently sand the edges. I'm doing it over my trash can so I don't get dust. And I just wanna show you here real quick how I do it, just very smoothly. I don't wanna get dust on the other ones though. So I'm gonna do it over my trash can. But after I have sanded each of these, I'm going to take a rubbing alcohol wipe and clean off the surface really well, make sure I got all that dust off and any other oils that might have gotten on the surface of the coaster. After I've sanded the edges of all of them and prepped them by cleaning them with the alcohol wipe, I'm going to liberally apply that liquid latex. And you can see it goes on pretty white, so you can see where you've laid it already. Uh, but it does dry clear so you just want to make sure you get a really good coverage because this is going to catch any of those resin drips that when you pour the flood coat on the top side of these on the opposite side and that resin wants to run over the edges this is going to catch those drips for you i get the question all the time do you flood coat? Do I need to flood coat? It depends on the coaster. I say this every time, but being that we did add those lines on here, I think it is necessary to cover and protect those lines. I am pulling off that liquid latex and you can see where the drips are coming right up with that latex. They are beautiful and clean now and we have a gorgeous, beautiful, flawless flood coat on these now. And you you know, again, it's, it's up to you as the artist, as the creator to decide if you want a flood coat, but you know, consider that when you're pricing them out. If you use some extra resin, it really doesn't take that much resin to do a thin flood coat on your coasters. And if you protect the underside like this and do a flood coat, then it's easy peasy. I mean, you getting the drips right off. You don't have to worry about it. We've sanded our edges, so they're nice and smooth. And there you go. Done. Beautiful. Beautiful. And here are the cupcake coasters all done. I'm really curious to know which side you guys like better. I'm going to call this side A. And I'm going to call the underside that has kind of the sprinkles on it side B. And that's the sprinkles up in the white part. So let me know. And again, consider the Patreon page if you want some bonus stuff. Look at that Van Gogh just sparkling in there. I just think these are so pretty. I love them. I'm, I'm a little obsessed with these. I knew I wanted to make this a long video and go really in depth on these because I just feel really strongly about adding texture, adding clear negative space, adding a really cool chunky or multi-sized glitter, adding some lines for depth, and then just doing that finishing touch of a flood coat. I think those five things and you're knocking it out of the park. So thank you guys so, so, so much for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. It really helps me out. And I hope to see you guys next time. And until then, keep on pouring. <laughs>